Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Shadows Roundtable. My name is Zachary Steele, and I'm really excited to get here and to, to talk to Anthony and the group about uh, their upcoming play, Shadows. Um, Shadows follows the story of Lindsay L. Cooper, a once internationally successful singer who is attempting a comeback by touring with 13-year-old pop star Jess King. Lindsay's world is turned upside down, learning that her girlfriend, Kinsey, is diagnosed with an illness. The play explores the coincidence of trauma in our lives and the power of love outlasting sorrow. And today, um, I am welcomed by playwright Anthony Laura, producer Katia Mendoza, who is also starring as Lindsay L. Cooper, Annie Grace Payne, who is starring as Kinsley Lennon Coleman, and Ma well, Mary Blake, who is Tatum, Tatum Ross, and Susan Newfer, who is Stella Anders. Thank you all for being here and for letting me annoy you and pepper you with lots of questions. Um, I'm going to bounce around a little bit, um, so just be on the alert, be ready, and um, uh, we'll start with Anthony, um, because I love asking Anthony questions. So, Anthony, I want to ask, why do you do this to people? You know, do you just like to make people cry? But um, instead, I'm going to ask you, um, as a storyteller, where does this nexus of emotional depth and mental health come from? Um, so the story that we're dealing with here, some of it is stuff that I, I have experienced, um, particularly with, with dealing with loved ones, um, being very sick. And so we are telling as, you know, the second part of this from the girl with the red hair. So I was really interested in tackling this as, uh, in a different way of talking about memory. Um, and I think going back, I've just always noticed that the works that I've I've been attracted to have been uh, female centric and dealing with issues that we haven't really seen. Um, one of my favorite films is A Woman Under the Influence. Um, and and I just think when you when you take a subject and show it in a way that we haven't seen before, which I think is is harder with with our subjects because they are a little more well known. Although I think Lindsay's age of early onset is not something we see often. And and since you mentioned early onset, this um this one's actually for you and uh, with Katia as well, um, because. Part of the process of this play, part of the story is working through um, Lindsay's memory loss um, that kind of presents some visual challenges for you. So what's your plan to explore that and how did you come to the, the decision? Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things that we're doing um, are projections where we see what Lindsay is experiencing. And then as we head into act two, um, we start to work with those projections in ways of Lindsay grasping her memory. Um, and then I'll let Katya talk a little about what that's like. Yeah, um, it's really interesting because we throughout the course of the show, we kind of see Lindsay become a bit of like an unreliable narrator. Um, we, you kind of, the audience becomes very in tune with the memory, the losses that she's experiencing. And so it's almost as if they're kind of going into her head with her. Um, there is a bit of, um, I guess, situational irony as well, too, when they're in on something and um, Lindsay, you see Lindsay forgetting and you're like, wait, did she say that in that last scene? And it's it becomes a little bit um, not confusing, but um, a little, a little convoluted there, um, on purpose, of course, and I think it really helps, and I think the audience will definitely walk away with somewhat of a grasp on how that might have been affecting her. Yeah, I think I, visually that that sounds like that's going to work out really well too with the projection. So, pretty neat. Um, all right, so at the the heart of the story of Shadows, it, it involves the the love story between. Um, Kinsley and Lindsay. And um, so for both Katia and Annie Grace, uh, because it's such an important part of it, and that connection is so um, needed for the audience to really feel 
compelled to to care what what are the what or are you or have you the two of you done to help foster that that sense of connection i think a lot of it is just um the time we spend talking about our characters and their lives outside of the of what they of what the audiences see so um in the beginning there's a lot of table work that goes in and annie grace and i were able to have really nice long discussions about what our lives would be like pre before the show starts um and i think that really helps as well as just you know annie grace is such an amazing scene partner so bouncing off of her is um is a really fun experience yeah i i totally agree i think you know anthony does a really wonderful job of helping us to create a life for the characters outside of what's immediately written in the script, um, which I think really helps to kind of ground us and form that relationship. And, you know, same to Katya, she's just such a lovely gal. She's so easy to work with. So it's not too hard to, you know, like her and love her and get to work with her. Um, yeah, it's, it's, been a we've kind of set the process from the start of like okay what is this relationship what is it like um which has really helped throughout rehearsals cool cool um and and mary now you play you play tatum ross and um, tatum is a devoted friend but is also also a bit of a wild card um someone who makes you wonder just exactly what she might say next uh in a story that has so much emotional weight to it um how how important is Tatum's humor? <laughs> um, I think so important. Um, you know, I think for the audience sometimes, I know as an audience member for me, sometimes you go to see a play that's that's very heavy um, and it can be really well done, but by the end of it, you you leave the theater feeling a little bit drained, you know? And mm. so I think that balance of, of having moments of love and, and comedy and just some levity um, sprinkled in, I think it's so important. Um, Susan, um, Stella is not only Lindsay's aunt, but she's also her doctor. Um, how does Stella see her role in Ariana and Lindsay's lives in your viewpoint? Yeah, I think um, I think uh, my character <clears throat> sees herself as is trying to help uh, as the play goes on of uh, helping them to face kind of the trauma that they went through earlier and uh, kind of bring the family back together because they were they were kind of estranged um due to uh her her um Carmela her sister who's the girl's mother uh being a little difficult and troubled person and um so yeah uh, I think just and being a being a caring a caring uh healing professional it's um that that's that's approachable i think is really um i think it's important to her yeah um katia i apologize for this question but um Lin Lindsay spends a lot of time talking with the audience as she works through her her thoughts that kind of bound around her head um how did you prepare for this or if i'm, I'm being honest here um what i'm really asking is how often do you talk to yourself <laughs> Definitely. Um, so I've never had, I've never done anything where I had to break a wall. Um, I haven't even really done any Shakespeare plays where um, the characters I've done have um, done asides, but I was really exciting. And something that Anthony and I talked about was trying to just make it as personal as you can, whoever the audience is. Um, so definitely that. And I, you know what I do. I chat to myself a lot. I really do. Like it's it's kind of just obvious. Mm, okay, I might be telling on myself, but no. Like sometimes I will really catch myself like full on like conversations, and I'm like, hmm, maybe this is like a little like weird. Like I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's something that's fun. I think a lot of people do it. Um, even if it is just like thinking out loud and you know to help yourself kind of gather your thoughts. And I think that's partially what. Well, that is what Lindsay is doing. She does speak to an audience in order to kind of really gather her, organize her her thoughts and um, try and keep that memory alive. So yeah, I think I think a bunch of people will be able to relate to that. 
Yeah, I read I read somewhere and I couldn't possibly tell you where that um, that talking to yourself is actually a sign of genius. And and maybe that was said by somebody who talks to themselves a lot and wanted to justify it. I don't really care. It, <laughs> it's all, all the scientific data I need. I'm going to um, run. Yeah, yeah, run with that. That's great. Um, all right. I have a question for all of you, except for you, Anthony. You're not allowed to talk about yourself. Um, Anthony, as, as I kind of alluded to, he has this um, this this need or desire to tell in his stories, you know, things with emotional weight that he just kind of drops all over the stage and everything he writes. And uh, I'm curious when, when you as an actor are dealing with something that has such emotional intensity, do you find that you are drawing primarily from the script or are you drawing some from your own personal experiences? I often with just material so heavy like this um I try my best to obviously like we all need to take care of ourselves and if it is something that is very deeply personal you kind of have to ask yourself is this something that you're okay with channeling every time you do this and if it's not then we're you know you're gonna have to find another way um I always like to take whatever I can from the script and just fill in the blanks wherever needed um so yeah, I think a lot of it, where appropriate, there is a lot of substitution that goes in there. Um, but I think a lot of it is also kind of just stay, trying to stay as present as you can in each scene and with each scene partner. And I think that in and of itself really draws a lot out. Anybody else want to add to that? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think that, you know, every actor has their own little process and way of um, getting to the emotional state that they need to be in, um, you know, and I think it's a mix. Like, I personally can't say that I've lived the exact life that my character has, um, but I can do my best to pull from my own life and kind of as Katya was mentioning like kind of create substitutions of like okay is there something that I've experienced that kind of results in the same emotional place but also just like genuinely imagining like okay if I was in this situation you know how would I react how would I feel because a lot of it is just bringing yourself to the character and how you would be in this moment as well as kind of mixing that with what's written on the page um so it's definitely a mix and like you said like it's heavy stuff um so it's also I try and make it a point to take care of myself after rehearsal or after we do a run and know to separate myself kind of from the work you know yeah Susan or Mary you have anything to add to that yeah I would I would uh I would just kind of agree as a combination. I mean, there's there's so much in the script, um, and a lot of it is, is some of it's imagination, and some of it's is, is live. I use some lived experience for sure. I have probably more than other people, other people in the cast, so that's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it's it's great now, and it's also great that we're uh, that at least in my my part. Um, my character is always relating to other people in this in the scene it makes it a lot easier to to uh, to draw what i need you know mm -hmm. I wish I had something meaningful to add, but I, it's been said so lovely by everyone else. Um, I don't know, I guess just to reiterate um, what Annie Grace was saying, I, I feel very lucky that I don't have some of the experiences that my character is having here. Um, so I think in this play more than others, it's been about drawing from the imagination and sort of theoretically trying to put myself in Tatum's shoes. And I'll just kind of follow right with you since uh, we're talking about Tatum. Um, the friendship between Tatum and Lindsay is is very important um, to the story. And um, I'm curious if there's anything that you hope that um, people viewing it may gain um, or learn from the experience on how they might be able to best serve a friend going through what Lindsay's going through. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think with this play as a whole, a huge theme is just don't take anything for granted. Love the people around you. You know, you're here with them now and you have this moment together. And I think with Tatum and Lindsay, that's something that's 
definitely present. Um, you know, they have their ups and downs, they have their arguments, but in the end they come together and you see that they really love and care for each other. Um, so yeah, just be there for the people in your life. It's a good, good message. Um, Amy Grace, what do you love most about Kinsley? Oh my goodness. I love so much about her. Um, she's just, uh, I've, I've tried to take a lot of her kind of view on life and try and apply it to myself. I think one thing she does really, really well, and I often forget is to live in the optimism. Um, I think it's, at least speaking for me, it's very easy for me to look at the glass half empty as opposed to half full and just learning to um, kind of reiterating what Mary was saying, just to live in the present and to just take stock of everything that I have in my life and be grateful. And um, yeah, I think her amount of gratitude that she she shows towards other people and, and what she has is, is one of my favorite things for sure. Cool. Um, Katia, you've, you've mentioned before that there are differences between you and Lindsay, um, but how much of yourself may, has made it or will make it into this performance that you have coming up? Yeah, I think I think a good amount, um, kind of like, um, I think it was Anna Grace who was mentioning it, just bringing a little bit of yourself to every character. Um, I think I see that more so with when she is kind of around um, Kensley and she is her more uh, maybe free self um, I think what Kensley brings out of her is something that only she could really bring out um, only mm -hmm. something that deep of a love could bring out of her um, and so I think definitely I, I see myself more in that kind of area of Lindsay's life um, yeah and then of course with every of I've never struggled with dementia or any kind of, um, <laughs> you know, um, I do have a, fa a family member who has, um, however, you know, with that, it's mainly just kind of research and imaginative play. So I would say the majority of myself I bring is really just a, the love she brings to others. Cool. Um, I'm going to ask all of you this question and, and Anthony, you, you may chime in as well this time. I gave you permission. Um, probably more from a, the writing standpoint and, and things that you learned there, but I, I'm curious how much you knew about early onset Alzheimer's coming into this, uh, either the writing or the the role that you're taking on. And um, I think most importantly, what what do you hope people gain from being able to learn about it through this process? Um, and uh, Anthony, why don't we start with you? Sure. Um... So going in, I knew um, a little bit, but more about how it affected um, people around 55 and over. Um, so the research that I had found was, was startling. Um, number one, based on age, and number two, based on that, uh, which is... Um, overall, al Alzheimer's um, affects women more than men. And I hadn't seen uh, very many plays with the exception of the other plays uh, that dealt with early onset. Um, and, and, you know, still Alice I had seen. Um, but again, dealing with women who are about 55 or so and over. Um, so, however... Um, another thing I hadn't seen, because it tends to be less dramatic, is um, telling a story from the point of diagnosis and not taking it all the way through end stage. Um, so our play ends before um, it moves to um, the later stages. And I thought that was really interesting and, and important, particularly when we're dealing with the age range of um, Katya's character, which is, which is 30. And a lot of these signs can, um, 
cannot be followed up on because there are things we go through every day. Um, so I do hope that the story starts to bring awareness to this particular age group as well, um, because a, something that we don't talk about in the play, but we did have in our earlier drafts, is the fact that um, insurance doesn't really cover uh, these age ranges because it's not officially recognized in that demographic yet. So it becomes much harder to get care. Susan, what about you? Have you what what do you hope people will gain from this experience well, of I, seeing? I think it's it's great to to uh, spotlight this this disease. I really didn't know that much about it. I think I I think I had done scenes from the other place in acting class. So I read the play. This is really, mm -hmm. um, of course, it's you know it's used for dramatic effect, but it was very interesting and. Um, um, yeah, so I, I, it started me doing more research. I, you know, I seem to be on everybody's email list. So I've been watching a lot of webinars about Alzheimer's and dementia stuff. So I've got lots of ideas, Anthony, <laughs> <laughs> how you can reverse it. I'm like, really, I'm really excited, but, uh, it's, you know, but, um, I also, I mean, just learning more about, about dementia and Alzheimer's to all to, you know, universally i mean that it's getting it is, seems to be pretty prevalent and um what may be the causes of it i find really interesting so um yeah i think you know if it gets people thinking about it i think it'll be very useful yeah um anthony where where are we at right now in the process and um just kind of an add-on question to that um what what is your favorite part of this whole process before opening? What is your favorite part of this whole process? So tomorrow is actually our, our last rehearsal before we start running the show. Um, and then we'll, well, we start running act two and then we, we start doing the full runs before we head into tech. Um, I mean, before opening, I really just like being in the room for the first time with a scene. Um, because it's just, it's still, it's still fresh. Um, the benefits of a longer rehearsal process is that we don't need to lock things right away. Um, so we get to live with it a bit and come back and see if what we worked on is still working. So I think it's, I, I just get very excited when, when actors are excited to explore. Um. Kati, you've taken on the role as producer on, on this wonderful play here. And I'm curious how that experience has been for you. It's been great. Um, so I started as associate producer for the workshop, which was um, amazing. Obviously a completely kind of different role. Um, stepping up as producer for the show has been a really nice, wonderful learning experience as well. Um, I've never done anything producer wise, producing wise. Um, so it's been really great. I really like kind of learning the business side of things. It's something that is, I think is really beneficial, um, moving forward, just whenever any industry you're in. So, uh, yeah, it's been great. And Anthony is a great leader. Is that something that you would see yourself doing in future performances or maybe even just taking on that side rather than the acting side? I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would say taking over like instead of the acting side, but I do definitely think it's something that I'd like to um, explore again. Um, I do think probably further down the line. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, all right, I'm gonna turn you all into to pitch men, pitch women. I don't know, what's pitch people? Is that what we say? I'm not sure. I'm not, not even a term, um, but sell me on, on why I need to come see shadows. Yeah. Um, I've got to put somebody on the spot, so I'm going to start with Annie Grace. Oh my goodness, me oh I. I, I really, truly think this is a play for everyone. Um, I think these are all really lovely characters, and they're all complex and strong, and I think whoever you are in the audience, whatever age, whatever you're going through in your life, I think there's something you can see reflected in yourself in the show. And I think that's always really lovely to 
to see and to feel connected to a piece of art um as well as just it's it's such a heartwarming show and um you know despite its its heaviness it it really does um you know make your heart happy at the end and i any piece of art that can make you feel that way i think is a very special one Kati, what about you yeah okay <laughs> well first and foremost you're gonna come see a gorgeous gorgeous tragic love story it's very bittersweet it's so cute you know i mean reading it the first draft i got like little cute butterflies and i was like oh seeing Lindsay and kensley's relationship as well as all the relationships i think there's something that you don't see a lot highlighted in a lot of shows and i think in this show you see friendships, fem all female, which is, I think is also amazing. You don't see it too often. Female friendships, female familial relationships, and romantic relationships. And there's also some really great dramatic and really great comedic moments. And you get to see here Aneta and Alexandra sing. So come see the show. <laughs> Mary, what about you? All right, elevator pitch. Um, this is a play about love. It's like Katya said, we've got friendships, we've got romantic relationships, we have family relationships. I, I think no matter who you are, what background you're coming from, you will find a way to relate to this show because it just has everything. Um, and you know, who, who doesn't experience love? We all deserve love. And that's why you should come see Shadows. Susan. Well, come see five beautiful young ladies and me in a wonderful, <laughs> <laughs> in a wonderful, heartwarming, touching play about love and memory and loss um, that will just make you feel all warm and fuzzy. And I'm going to I'm going to counter you there by saying that I believe young to be something that is not exterior. So I'm going to say, come see six beautiful young women uh, tell this story. Um, we're, we're just about out of time, so I'm going to I'm going to throw one last question to all of you. And then, Anthony, I have one more for you. Um, and this is the most important question so far. Not at all because I like to put Anthony on the spot, but what is it about working with Anthony that you love most? And um, I'll just work backwards this time. So Susan, you have to go first. Somebody always has to go first. Okay. Um, yeah, Anthony is um, a, a lovely soul. He's got such a big heart. And um, uh, looking at him, I can, <laughs> I can and, tell him to turn his camera off if you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's a wonderful director and a wonderful writer. You know, um, I just feel like, you know, he's just his, the way he um, he has he has a vision, but he's a vision for the way he wants things to look. But he's very um, really wants us to bring our our um, ourselves to it and um, just encouraging and um, wonderful to work with. Mary. Yeah, in the spirit of that, I think Anthony is a real collaborator and, and you know, sometimes you work with directors who have a very clear vision going into it, which is also great, you know, everybody has their process, but I think sometimes as an actor, it's really nice to have a director who is willing to hear what you, what ideas you have and what you'd like to try, and I think that's something that's been great about this process. Katia. Well, this is my second project working with Anthony, and I think the um, actor-director relationship has just gotten better. Um, I'm kind of popping off what Mary was saying. He is very collaborative, and he makes the entire rehearsal process incredibly comfortable while also challenging in different ways. And I think that's really, really healthy, a really good balance. Um, and yeah, I mean, at first I kind of I was almost intimidating because I had never really worked with a director who was so open to hearing your thoughts and your ideas. It was mainly just do this, do this, uh, done. Um, which, you know, is fine. <laughs> but um, I, it's really refreshing working with them. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm gonna echo all the lovely things they said. He, he's, he's so passionate about 
his work and his craft. And I think that passion is just so infectious. Um, and so rehearsal process is always so exciting. And it's just like, it's just like fun to play. It's honestly just, uh, we all come to meet and dress up and play pretend. And it's it's really fun. And, uh, you know, to echo what Mary and Katya were saying, he's so collaborative. And, you know, I, I've not personally worked with a whole lot of directors who are so involved with the actor process, um, which has been really a fun experience to get to, you know, dive deeper into who the characters are and what story we all want to tell together. Doing okay, Anthony? All right, I got one last question for you. And it's a, a little bit of a combination of these last two. So I want you to, to tell me why I need to come see the show, but I want you to tell me that by talking about the people doing the performances. Sure. Um, so first, I, I was glad you asked that question because something I wanted to say, particularly with an all-female ensemble, is that I don't think the show is only for women. Um, and something that we've talked about at points in the rehearsal process, uh, we talked about this also with Girl with the Red Hair last year, is that um, we've never really talked about these characters as women. We've only really ever spoken with them. Uh, about them being people. Um, so I think, you know, coming for for a love story. Um, and the reason I go to the theater, I think, which is to see powerful acting. Um, going around, yes. Um, I think one of the reasons that I love working with Susan um, is her vulnerability. And I think she's brought something to Stella that wasn't uh, that wasn't in the draft, that what wasn't what I saw. There's um, a beautiful, beautiful softness. Um, and and with Mary, I've got to see how this character has grown since the workshop. Um, and and Mary is hilarious. Um, there are just these moments where we just, we just lose ourselves and it's, it's fantastic. Um, and I mean, Kensley is, is a character, um, that I was really passionate about wanting to find the right person for to cast and Annie Grace has, has exceeded that, um, because she really, is you know she she's doing she's doing double work without ruining anything in in two acts and um and i think number one just you feel her heart with every word um and and i also speak about anetta and alexandra who, who are not here who are i mean alexandra is the role was written specifically for her um and and just, you know, I've worked with her since she was 10, she's 14 now. Um, so just seeing her strength as an actor has been really beautiful. Um, Ariana is, I think, a really, really difficult role to play um, for majority of reasons, also including that there's um, singing. And, and I think, you know, and Katya was saying this in one of the roundtables too, that um, Anetta is a, is a different uh, Ariana than, than we've seen. And just a, a really beautiful, subtle way of, of showing this, uh, what this character is going through. Um, and then, you know, uh, with Katya, it's, it's been a real joy seeing what she's brought to Lindsay. Um, I mean, it's, everyone used to tell me that uh, Haley was, uh, a, from Girl with the Red Hair, was a difficult role to play. And Katya has double the lines of Haley. And she, and you just don't, I love that she brings such joy to the process. Um, and I think that's a question that we get a lot, which is when we're doing such a, a heavy play, what are rehearsals like? I think everyone thinks like we're crying. 
and and we actually do laugh a lot and i think that is because of um the joy the actors bring into the room i would probably just guess that it also has a lot to do with your leadership too so probably a little bit of both but well, that's all the questions I have. Thank you so much, not just for answering the questions, but for giving me the opportunity to ask them. It's uh, been, a, it's been a true joy. Um, and I do sincerely hope that I have the opportunity to make it to see you all in action. Um, and for those who are interested, Shadows is going to run from December 1st through 16th at the ART New York Theaters, Jeffrey M. Paula Gural Theater. Um, tickets are available at Shadows of the Play dot com and um biased or not go and see this thing um it's a tremendous script with tremendous talent behind it and i think it's going to be awesome to see so thank you all thank you zach